Jim Patrick's dedication to creating and developing the cochlear bionic ear has led to restored or newly created hearing for over 250,000 people. His work on this extraordinary device began over 40 years ago in 1975 at the University of Melbourne, where Jim joined the cochlear research and development team led by Professor Graham Clark. I believe very strongly in the relationship between medicine or biology and engineering, and Jim really typified that transition. Committed to realising the connection between science and biology, Jim was convinced computer science and communications engineering were key to restoring hearing. However, the majority of the medical and scientific community disagreed. This perception remained the same until 1978 when Rod Saunders received the world's first multi-channel cochlear implant and was able to hear again. Rod Saunders was a man who volunteered to be our first patient because he'd gone deaf in his mid-40s from a car accident and was really very committed to telling us what it sounded like. We learnt that if you stimulated with more than one electrode at a time, the currents from those electrodes would interact with each other and give you really unpredictable hearing percepts. We moved from simultaneous stimulation to sequential stimulation and when that coding strategy was used with Rod Saunders, it was just fantastic. It meant that he could lip read with the aid of the electrical stimulation and he couldn't lip read without it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. When it happened, I was so overcome with emotion, relief, joy, I burst into tears. Since then, Jim has developed the cochlear implant to become a major commercial medical success. A partnership between the Australian Government and private companies Nucleus and Cochlear, where Jim is now Senior Vice President and Chief Scientist, has seen the implant now available in more than 100 countries. In 1990, it was the first of its kind to be approved for use in children in America. Jim has played a very significant role in ensuring Cochlear's commercial success because the drivers of a business like Cochlear are technologic innovation directed at, at improving the outcomes for our cochlear implant recipients but being able to take that to the world. It's an extraordinarily complex company to manage and an extraordinarily difficult task to maintain technological leadership. Jim's one of the people that have played a very important role in ensuring that the company was always well out in front and has stayed out in front all along. Unlike a hearing aid that amplifies sound, a cochlear implant is an advanced mix of medical and engineering technology that uses neural stimulation to aid hearing. Sounds are picked up by the sound processor, which sits just behind the ear. These are turned into digital code and sent to the implant, which then converts the code into electrical signals and sends them down the electrode array, which is fitted in the person's cochlea. This stimulates nerve fibres and the signals are recognised by the brain as sound. I was full-time hearing aid user, but my hearing loss continued to progress. And in my late 30s, um, that was when I realised it was, it was time for a change, it was time for something else. Uh, the hearing aids just weren't um, giving me all the access to the sounds, so I was having difficulty understanding people. I needed to uh, get a cochlear implant. I went from 26% single word recognition scores to 84% in just three short months. To talk to the people who have the device or talk to the parents of the, the children that have them and just to hear from them makes you feel so pleased that you can help people. Today, Cochlear Limited is one of Australia's most successful listed companies and the cochlear implant benefits from years of research and modifications. Probably the best thing for me is what's called SCAN. SCAN is an automatic scene classifier. The processor is continuously monitoring the background noise and the, and the environment that I'm in, and it's making adjustments for me on the fly automatically. It can choose the particular form of pre-processing which will give the best benefit to the recipient for that particular environment and switch automatically between environments. It is so effective that even children who are born deaf and implanted before the age of two can have spoken language that is close to normal. They put an S loop into the electrode, so as the baby grows, that S gradually straightens out. And that way that implant can be in place and functioning for 70 years. The benefits of Jim's work are yet to be fully realised with cochlear implant technology now being considered across a range of medical applications. It's never, ever 
been about Jim. It's only ever been about other people that require help. Jim's empathy and compassion and understanding of hearing loss comes out in the work that he does for Cochlear and all of the research that he's done over the years. Children are going to be able to hear when their parents say, I love you. And that's all only possible because of the technology that Jim's brought into the world. This year, we recognise the decades of dedication and brilliant research that have made life-changing differences to thousands of people throughout the world by honouring Jim Patrick with the Clooney's Ross Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs>